Dr. Tom Shires, the Chief of Surgery at Parkland Memorial Hospital and Southwestern Medical School, is coming into the room now to make a statement on Mr. Oswald. Dr. Shires has left the operating Dr. room, the operating table where Oswald is lying, to make this statement. Anybody want to ask a question? Or what? Could you talk a little louder, Doctor? Is he, al is he alive, Doctor? No. Let, he let just Dr. Died. Shires make his statement, please. When did he die, Doctor? He died at, thir at 107, our time, 1307, of his gunshot wound. Yeah, you Would you like to ask questions or what? Yeah, he, Mr. Oswald died at 107, our time, in the operating room of the gunshot wound, which he had received. Would you describe his last moments on the operating table, please? The last moments were rather hectic. He had a cardiac arrest from all the massive blood loss and massive injury. The last few minutes were spent in cardiac resuscitation, open heart massage, uh, electrical defibrillation, internal defibrillation, and finally there were absolutely no signs of life at all, fixed dilated pupils and all the signs of death. How many surgeons were working on him at the time? There were four actually operating uh, scrubbed at the same time, Did besides you, the others. How long was he ever conscious? Cardiac arrest did, uh, he die? I don't really know. Did, uh, I imagine 20 or 30 minutes. Microphone. Did he ever talk to you or say anything? No, he never regained consciousness at all. In fact, before surgery, we had no blood pressure, uh, a few agonal respiratory efforts, and that was all. During the operation, once during the operation, once we got control of the major vessels, the aorta, the vena cava, the kidney injury, we had a blood pressure for a time, but then we had the cardiac arrest, which was obviously incident to massive blood loss, uh, the anoxia that had occurred. This was a and then again, again, a fatal wound that he received. Was there ever any chance for him to recover? Well, there's always a chance uh, as long as you have uh, signs of life, and we had at least a, uh, a heartbeat preoperatively, so uh, there was a slight chance. So we. Tried. What was your impression when you first saw him, though? Did you have any hope uh, on your first impression for recovery? Not much, although, again, there's always a chance. The course of the bullet wound through the upper abdomen was such one could feel a bullet under the skin on the right side, the entrance wound in the upper abdomen on the left side. Uh, we've guessed that he had injured all the major vessels in the between space and sure what enough organs? he had. What organs from left to right this went through the spleen then into the pancreas, uh, then the aorta, the vena cava, the right kidney, right lobe of the liver, out into the subcutaneous area, just transecting. Under the skin, just under the skin. Under the skin on the right side. On the right side. Uh, spleen, aorta, vena cava, pancreas, kidney, liver, Dr. chest wall. Doctor Charles, do you know what caliber bullet it would have been? Yeah, it looked like a 38 caliber bullet. We removed the uh, bullet at the end. After death, you removed the bullet? Well, yes. Mm -hmm. It looked like what, sir? 38 caliber. Just guessing. You didn't uh, have blood pressure before surgery? No, no blood pressure at all. Did you say that he did have damage uh, on investigating? He did find damage in all those organs? Every one of them. What was the immediate cause of death? The gunshot wound. Uh, the final cause of death was massive injury with massive blood loss uh, and then cardiac arrest. Doctor, would you say that Oswald might have had a weak heart to begin with? No way of telling. It uh, actually did not appear to be damaged previously. Uh, when we did the cardiac massage, uh, the problem was a flabby heart, which was indicative of massive blood loss and anoxia, which he sustained from the time of the injury. From your observation, what would you say was his general condition besides the gunshot wound? In other words, was he physically a well man? On brief inspection in the emergency room, apparently so. Who, who did the massage? Uh, all of the operating surgeons I did, Dr. Perry, Dr. McClellan, Dr. Who are Jones. the operating surgeons? Uh, Dr. Perry, Dr. McClellan, Dr. Jones, there were three others besides me. They just happened to be in the building at the time? We were all in the building. And did you first inform his relatives of the death before you came here? No, I came right here from the operating room, escorted from the operating room. 
Doctor, those in the operating room, were any of those same people present at the time of the president's death? Yes, as you know, Dr. Perry did the tracheotomy on uh, President oh, Kennedy. Malcolm Perry did. That's right. Dr. Charles, uh, did you have a pacemaker on him at yeah. the time he died? Yeah. How long did you keep it going after, after he died? Until there were absolutely no signs of life. Uh, how long that was, I don't know. Several, several minutes. Is the defibrillator still on him? The defibrillator was used several times, yeah. You did determine death, was it about 107 p.m.? That's right, 107. What? Uh, Dr. Shires, mm -hmm. uh, would, uh, well, I would like to ask Dr. Shires to dictate uh, a short statement to our secretaries, which we will reproduce and get into your hands so that everybody can have these details, if that's agreeable with you, Dr. Shire. Would you like to find that? Well, that's the story from Parkland Hospital. Press room set up 75 to 85 feet and one flight down from the surgical section where Lee Oswald has just died. He died 48 hours, almost to the minute, after the death of President yes. Kennedy, the man he is accused of assassinating and one of them. This final development, Lee Oswald has died a fantastic new development in one of the most fantastic stories in American history. Here's the resume of what happened during this last hectic hour. Oswald was brought down the elevator of the city jail in downtown Dallas to be transferred to the county jail. This was just before noon. Ahead of him were two homicide detectives. Beside him was Captain Will Fritz. The elevator stopped at the garage level. Backed up to the entrance of the garage was a Brinks armored truck, which was to take the prisoner one and a half miles to the county jail. Oswald made only a few steps in the direction of the truck when a man, a stocky man, lunged at him. A muffled sound like an explosion was heard. Next, we learned that Oswald had been rushed by ambulance to Parkland Hospital. He arrived here at approximately 11.30. He was moved immediately into emergency room number two, where he was given intravenous injections, including blood. He was there only momentarily, though. His condition was so bad, in fact, it was described as extremely critical. He was moved upstairs at once to surgery. Dr. Tom Shires and a team of about five or six surgeons worked unsuccessfully for over an hour to try and save his life. In the midst of the operation, Shire sent in this statement to newsmen. He said there had been a cardiac arrest, which means no rupture or occlusion of the heart, that the heart had stopped beating because of the massive hemorrhaging of the stomach. The, the, the bullet, caliber unknown yet, had entered his left side and had not exited. A chest surgeon, we don't know his name yet, opened the chest and began massaging the heart. The attempt at restoring heartbeat was temporarily successful. We received a poor, a, another report within about five minutes from the surgery section that an electronic pacemaker was being used to try to restore a, a rhythmic heart for Oswald. Then, about ten minutes after that, just minutes ago, as you witnessed it yourself, Dr. Shires came in this press room and announced that Lee Oswald was dead. This is Charles Murphy reporting from the Parkland Hospital press room in Dallas.